If you're a huge hummus fan, but have never made it at home, I'm gonna show you how easy it is. It's so incredibly delicious, you will never buy it from the store again. Now, because you know I'm all about keeping recipes as traditional, as classic as possible, we have a little bit of prep with these chickpeas. Sound good? Let's cook. I've got some dried garbanzo beans, that's what chickpeas are also called, and I'm gonna put them right into a half gallon container. I'm going right over to the sink because what I wanna do here is I wanna completely submerge them in water. I want the water to be about four inches over the top of the dried garbanzo beans. What I'm gonna do next is simply set them to the side on a counter, add a top and let them rest overnight or at least eight hours. If you're already thinking, no way you're gonna do this step, why don't you just pop the can, drain it, put it in the food processor, boom, you can have hummus right on the spot. Or you can fast track it and add some boiling water to those dried chickpeas, let it sit for an hour and you're good. Me, you know I'm a little bit of that classic nature like I was saying and I like to keep recipes super traditional because when they're homemade from scratch, they always taste better. Here's what we're gonna do now. So our beans have been sitting and soaking overnight. Let's have a look. You can see they're puffed up and they've multiplied at least two or maybe even three times the size. Let's head back over to the sink. We're simply gonna drain all of that water off and give it a quick spray just to clean it up a bit, sort through any, maybe if there's some black ones, discard them. Give the strainer a good shake, go over to a large size pot, empty all those beans in there, and then we're gonna fill up the pot until it's about two inches over the top of the garbanzo beans, or like I like to do and stick my finger in there. Once I get to my second knuckle, I know I'm good. What we're gonna do next is add in some baking soda. Don't freak out, yes, I just added baking soda. And it creates an alkaline environment in that water and breaks down the pectin in the chickpea so the shells easily come off, but we're gonna get to that in a few more seconds. Now what we wanna do is crank the heat to high because we want to bring this to a boil. It will not take long to get there. And once it's at this point, immediately turn the heat down because it needs to simmer for in between 30 and 40 minutes. While most hummus recipes call for a few cloves of raw garlic, I feel like it's just a little bit too much bite, like that spicy garlic taste. I don't want that. And while these chickpeas are simmering down, this is great timing because I'm gonna show you an awesome trick to making roasted garlic. Here we go. I've got some garlic cloves that I'm going to add to a medium sized sauce pot. Next, I'm gonna pour in some extra virgin olive oil. Please use extra virgin, it'll be that much better. Immediately turn the heat down to low because we want to slow cook this. It's gonna take about 30 minutes or so, but after 15 to 20, let's just come back, give it a look. Looks great, starting to brown. Also, let's take a peek into our chickpeas. You can see the water's a little bit cloudy, but we're in good shape. After another 10 or 15 minutes, let's remove that pot. Immediately drain it into the sink. I'm going to give it a nice little spray and sort of rinse it down and cool it down a little bit. Now this part is completely optional, but it is recommended that you remove the shell. You can do this one at a time, which will take way too long if you ask me, or you can add them back to the pot and fill it up with cold water. Now the reason we remove the shell is because it will make the hummus that much more creamier, but again, it is totally optional and it does take a few minutes to do. Another easy way to remove the shell is get your hands in there and sort of irritate them and rub them together very gently. You don't wanna break them up. You'll notice that the shells start to float. Go ahead and grab a strainer or a little colander and simply scoop all of those out there, discard them. And once you've got most of them, don't worry if you don't get all of them, go ahead and strain those garbanzo beans again. What I'm gonna do is just put them right in the pot. Then I'm gonna set them to the side and I wanna go have a look now at my roasted garlic. Yes, obviously there are a lot of chickpeas here. Me, I like to make a lot of hummus because it lasts for a week and I can simply graze on it throughout the entire week or I can put it in a burrito or I can put it in pasta. There's so many great things to do with hummus. So don't freak out that there's too much here. And if you want, you can save some to the side, maybe put some in salads or anything else that you want. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and grab that roasted garlic right off the burner. It looks absolutely fantastic. Heading over to the countertop where I have a small sauce pot and a little strainer. I just wanna drain out those roasted garlic cloves and oh my gosh, does it smell amazing in here. Maybe now you're seeing what I'm doing. You've got roasted garlic cloves, you've got roasted garlic olive oil. Yes, there is gonna be a lot of leftover of both, but roasted garlic is amazing when spread on bread 
put into pasta dishes, on a sandwich, it doesn't matter, it's amazing. And the roasted garlic olive oil, think about cooking a steak in roasted garlic olive oil, or maybe chill it down and make a delicious roasted garlic olive oil vinaigrette. So many things to do with this. That's why I always make extra so I can use it in something else. Now, we are finally going to make our hummus. So add all of those chickpeas right to a food processor, put the top on, and what I'm gonna do is sort of pulse it on high speed. What I'm looking to do here is get a really thick paste. It's gonna take about a minute to a minute and a half for it to get to this consistency. Let's go ahead and have a look. This is perfect. Now let's add some more ingredients. We want to next add in some tahini. This is a crucial ingredient. It's simply ground up sesame seeds. I'm next going to squeeze in some lemon juice. I usually hold my hand down below and let the lemon juice sort of drip through the cracks of my fingers and let me catch the seeds, just like you see here. Just an easy trick there. Now I'm going to add in some of those roasted garlic cloves, so good. Season it up very, very well with sea salt. Go ahead and add the top back to the food processor. And what I'm gonna do here is process on low speed while slowly adding in some of that roasted garlic olive oil. This is gonna take your hummus to the next level, my friends, I promise you. Once it is to a nice creamy consistency, this looks fantastic. Let's have a little taste. Stick your spoon in there. Give it a try. Does it need more lemon, need more tahini, need more salt? If it's good to go, then let's go. I can't say it enough. Once you start understanding these fundamental cooking techniques and putting them into practice, like making a delicious roasted garlic olive oil, how to properly make a hummus with the right ingredients and take it over the top with roasted garlic and roasted garlic olive oil, you put this into everyday cooking and your food, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so amazing. There's gonna be no reason to go out because it's gonna be better than the restaurants, better than anything you're gonna get in the grocery stores. It's the best, there's just no other way to do it. So now, of course, let's plate up in slow-mo. I like to place this on a plate. You could absolutely do it in a bowl, but here's why I like the plate. Once you've got a good amount of hummus on that plate, place your spoon down to the outside of that chunk of hummus and slowly rotate the plate while making this beautiful little spiral. Here's the reason we do this. I'm gonna pour some olive oil in and it's going to drip down in that little crack and crevice around the outside hummus. I'm finishing it with a little bit of cayenne pepper. You could use paprika if you wanted to. And then finally with some fresh chopped parsley. Man oh man, check out this beauty. Once you eat homemade anything, there's no going back. And this hummus is the exact same way. It's so delicious. You should definitely make this if you're a huge hummus fan. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel. Oh yeah, check out this video. I promise you'll love it. It's amazing and I'll see you on there.